Hello, hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Um, this is Gifty from Balormong, Canada, and um, welcome to my next uh, feature um, on the Balormong, Canada feature series. Today's feature is going to be discussing um, math, academics, um, and SATs. ACTs. So if you are an athlete or if you're a parent who has uh, an athlete that plans to go to school in the U.S., that plans to go to college or university or JUCO, anything to do with going to get their academics um, career in the U.S., there is a way to get there. Um, you do have to go through a series of tests and um, one of the companies that does that is uh, Best um, Education Prep. And they are going to be here with me today um, sharing what they do and overall what um, the whole SAT process is and what you can do to help your student athlete to be able to um, get themselves prepared and understand the process and make sure that First of all, they get they pass the test and they're able to continue their journey there in the US. So if you allow me for a few seconds, I will invite Joe um, from Best Education Prep and um, he will be sharing his information with us um, as much as we can um, learn. So give me one second and um, again, uh, for anybody else that, you know, join a little bit later, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat. Um, it is an open um, discussion. It is, um, I'm sure Joe will be more than willing to be able to um, answer any questions that anybody have. So if you are not sure of what to say or how to go about it or where they're located, um, by all means, go ahead and um Make sure that you are putting in the question, asking in, and he will be more than willing to um, answer those questions for you. So I'm just waiting for Joel to be able to join us um, in a few minutes. Um, thank you for everybody that is joining in. Um, again, my name is Gifty, and I'm the baller, I'm the founder of Baller Mom Canada. I'm not a baller; I'm a parent. Um, and if you're tuning in today, it's possibly because you have a child, or you yourself is an athlete that is looking to go to school in U.S. and you're looking for information on how to do the SATs and ACTs and the requirements of it and how to prepare yourself for it. Um, so again, give me a few minutes, and I am going to invite uh, Mr. Joe Karapi from um, Best Ed Education. So give me one sec. So Joe, if you're watching, please go ahead and join me so I can give you the invite. Um, just a couple of people are here already waiting so that we can get it started. And uh, while I'm here, I'm going to wave to all of you guys. Thank you so much. There we go. So he is going to be joining us shortly. And uh, mind you, there's a couple of people that, you know, um, don't use the Instagram as often. So when you're doing it live, it takes a while for individuals to get used to it. So I will definitely be um, giving him some time to come and join us. Um, and while you're here, please do share um, with anybody else you know that might be interested in getting these, this uh, information Um when it's done, save it, you know, pause it, review it, go back and forth, really listen to it as often as you can. And again, I will share Joe's um, information so that you can go ahead and um, also connect with him and his founder. So give me a second while I reconnect with him. He's just currently not available yet. So give me a few seconds. All right, Joe. And uh, so I am here in Toronto, Canada. So wherever you are, hopefully you didn't have this rainy day that we had here, um, cold. And from what I understand, the kids did not get to go outside during recess. So that's not good. Um, they're kind of a little bit bummed on that, but that's okay. Um, best Ed Prep, let's go. Let me see if he's allowed to be joining us now and give me a few moments.
Okay. He's trying. Let's go. Okay. And thank you guys to everybody that's still um, trying to uh, still stay with me here while I connect with him. Give me a few moments. And he is coming shortly. So Joe, if you are able to please send me the invite here, I am sending it to you. I just need you to be able to accept so that we can um, start a conversation. For everybody that is joining in, thank you. Today we are Okay, so I'm not sure if the call that I had joined um, went through, but um, Joe is going to be joining us now on live so we can do the discussion. And again, today's talk is going to be about education, the education part of being a student athlete, um, preparing yourself. to join um, to go to US especially for the Canadian students that would um, that have interest in wanting to go to so Joe's team um, provide SAT preparations and, and support in helping you so he will be joining us shortly and I think he just joined us there it is I got it out. that's okay so hello good evening Hello, good evening. I appreciate your patience. I was here, but I'm in the wrong place. That's okay. That's okay. We all learn every now and then. And I also want to say thank you to everyone that tuned in and still stay put um, while we work out all of these small little technical uh, switch around. So um, again, thank you for joining my Baller Mom series. Um, what I do here is I try to connect uh, my parent community and the athletes with individuals that are doing things to helping us raise our athletes to be the best they can, whether it be, you know, still playing or anything related within the sports world. And the services that you provide is one that is very also important. And um, I don't want to do the introduction on that. I will just give you the platform for you to introduce yourself and tell everybody who's watching um, who you are and where you're from and what you do. No, oh, thank you. I appreciate that and uh, appreciate everyone's patience. So really quickly, I, uh, and I'll, I know you have a few other questions lined up, but, and I might answer or spoil some of the surprises, but uh, I was a sports kid, soccer kid growing up in the Mississauga area, just outside the GTA. And I like to think that I worked pretty hard at the game and I was fortunate enough to be selected into Team Ontario and the youth national team years ago. And so from there, I ended up on a soccer scholarship to Penn State. Mm -hmm. Um, had a very good experience on the field as, a, as, a, as an athlete, had a very good experience, you know, as a student using my, you know, using my soccer skills to earn an education, um, you know, can be a bit of a game changer for kids and certain families. I grew up in a family with two immigrant parents, uh, you know, not um, higher education educated. So it was a big deal um, to be able to use my uh, athletic skills to earn an education and now I'm a uh, high school teacher, math teacher, but moving to the role of guidance counselor, which given what we, I do outside of that really comes into play and really uh, helps out our service and, our, and the knowledge that we can pass on to the athletes and the families. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, we, for about five or six years now, a colleague of mine 
I'm the math brains, if you will, and he's the English teacher, reading and writing brains. And uh, we got together to provide a service to help student athletes okay. and their families prepare themselves for this journey uh, in pursuit of post-secondary athletics. Um, can be in the US, can be in Canada. Um, and we strictly focus on the academic side of things, right? Uh, we're not recruiters. We don't connect people with basketball programs or uh, soccer programs, right? There's a lot of really good people in those areas that do that and have that expertise. That's not our area. We stay, on, stay in our lane. And, uh, yeah, we help the kids academically, whether it's tutoring, um, you know, as they go through high school or whether it's test prep for the SAT and ACT um, as they look to kind of jump through that hoop and overcome that obstacle and when they're serious on their journey about pursuing an athletic scholarship. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, in a nutshell, you, you do it all, which is good. And you know what? You hit on the key point with regards to academics. And um, as parents, you know, yes, our kids love the sports, but we always emphasize, you know, school first, you know, or keep it in conjunction with it, you know, because what if your leg breaks? What if you get injured? What if your team goes broke, anything can happen. But once you have your brain, you know, you can still continue and pursue your journey um, and still have a career, even in sports. Like you said, you may not be playing it, but you still associate it with that within the sports world. Um, so great. Totally. Yeah, no, and I, and I mean, I might touch on it. And to get to post-secondary, I mean, it's, I think a lot of, we, you know, you, you mentioned as a parent, you're always asking your kids to work as hard as they can. And that's all you can ask, right? Because some kids, maybe it's, it's a 90 and it's a 95 and it, you know, they work at it, but they get it and that's amazing. Mm -hmm. But then there's other kids that are, you know, they work hard and they're 70, 75, whatever it happens to be. And that's amazing too, because they're working hard. What I, what we like to really impress upon the kids is that in order to get to the next level, athletically, you have to be really good. There's some high end academic institutions, a hundred percent. But not everyone ends up there, right? But you can still, with a 70, a 75, an athletic and balanced, well-rounded, you can. there's a place for you, um, and there's a pathway for kids, and they can really help themselves out, still play and compete at the next level, which is amazing, right? Um, and earn an education at the same time as well. So, yeah. Yeah, just kind of wanted to put that out there. That's good. Yes, so that that's that's a really good point. Um, again, if anyone have any questions, I already have some discussion questions that me and Joe will be talking about. But if anybody else has any particular questions as well, put it in the chat, and uh, we'll be sure to make sure that we get that answered for you. I will also share all of his information so you can reach out to him and his company um, to get that ball rolling for you, so that while you're playing, you're also getting the education and. Uh, academic side of it to support you because they go hand in hand um you did mention earlier that you do the test prep for not just only for going into us i think in the earlier i was saying if anyone's thinking of going in the states you mentioned that you also support here in canada um at what level do you provide that support for is it from kids from like say grade seven and up grade eight or is it mainly high school students yeah so yeah great question so and one of those comments is one of my, I want to say my, he was a great, he was a math student at my high school who was a very good basketball player. Uh, he's in the chat here, Vlad, little shout out, who then ended up taking our program and, but now is competing at uh, the OU, OUA level here in Ontario. Um, and so to answer your question is, we started the service mainly helping student athletes prepare for the SAT test mm -hmm. as they pursue an athletic scholarship. So that's kids headed towards the US. But then what happens along the way is some kids create additional options for themselves. They don't put all their eggs in one basket, right? So yes, maybe that's where I want to end up, mm -hmm. but let's take care of the whole picture so that if I don't end up there, what are my other options B, C, and D to fall back on, right? Yep. And Vlad, Vlad is a great example. Yes, maybe he wanted to look one way. He did the SAT program. So some kids will take the SAT test and prepare for it as an, and maybe that's where they want to go. But if you take care of yourself academically in high school, and maybe you don't end up uh, in that option one, let's say, mm -hmm. um, you can still compete at the next level, yep. uh, post-secondary athletics. And let's just say that we're really fortunate in Ontario uh, that our 
level of education at the high school level and our level of education at the university level is very good. It's never a mistake or a bad thing to go to post-secondary here in Ontario either, right? So, so we started it with the SAT, but then along the way, we were exposed to more student athletes who didn't just end up at the at the NCA level, they stayed in Canada. So we're helping those kids academically. And so they're, from there, we've also started providing some tutoring as well, um, you know, mostly at the high school level, uh, we, just because those are normally the types of student athletes we deal with. Okay. Um, but then we'll get like younger brothers and sisters who are kind of, you know, maybe in grade seven or grade eight and, and the parents will contact us for some uh, additional tutoring help as well. So. Aside from the best prep, yes, we do some uh, tutoring as well for math. The ma mainly the core courses, math, English, science, and some French as well. Great. Um, so with that, though, there is another question from someone um, that says, how much studying is required for the SAT? So take us through, you know, the process, like your steps. And um, I bring you a student and you do your initial assessment and stuff. How much preparation does it take for them to be able to do that? final test yeah so i'm gonna start out by saying at the end of the day it's a difficult test uh a test that you have to write to get into university yeah. so it's a, a difficult test it's challenging the content is challenging also the format we can get into that but the format it's all multiple choice our kids are not necessarily super familiar with the format of the test and it's three hours in length so our kids are not yeah right our kids are not familiar with that so answer the question how long does it take it takes more than two weeks mm -hmm. it maybe doesn't take for all kids four or five months we would dedicate or we would suggest a month, at least a month and a half to two months of preparation once a week twice a week doing a program like ours potentially you know you can choose not to do a program like ours but if you're gonna you need to be diligent and practice and give yourself a month and a half to two months because the test is made up of math, reading, and writing. Okay. Some kids maybe are stronger in one versus the other. Um, maybe some kids, you know, are strong in both or maybe not as strong in either. Or maybe they just feel like, you know, their challenges in both the subject areas. But, yeah, you want – so you need to look at both subject areas, right? And so a month and a half to two months, we don't necessarily expect kids to do it every day. Okay. Because they're high-performing student-athletes. Yes. Right, so we have their, their own schedules. Plus, if we're doing it during the school year, you have your own school work to think of. Yep. So, yeah, I'm not suggesting anyone has to do it. I, I dedicate a half an hour, an hour every day, but you need to dedicate some time. At the end of the day, it's three hours for the actual test. We run a program which is based on 18 hours. Wow. So let's put it let's put it that way. So that's six times greater yeah. than the actual longer than the actual test. So so think of it that way. So if we run a program, it's about 18 hours, and we expect kids to put in a little bit extra time. So maybe take that 18 hours, let's round it to 20 if you want, mm -hmm. and spread that out over a month and a half to two months. Wow. So that's, so that's the best way I, right? That's the that, best way that, I could maybe explain it. That is deep dedication. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and so what's neat is, um, and you saw our presentation when we did it for Coach Mom, and maybe you saw some pictures, is, What's really neat is the student athletes, the characteristics that make them high performing student athletes, the dedication and motivation mm -hmm. um, is what also drives them and helps a lot of these kids succeed off their field or court of play as well, right? Yes, some of them have more challenges with academics than others, but again, you don't necessarily have to get perfect on the SAT test to get a scholarship, right? You need to earn the minimum, that's fine, and we could talk about that. I um, mean, yeah, so to take care of. Tell us, what is the, the minimum? Or does it yeah, so the state or by? Yeah, so, sure. So the SAT test is based out of 1600. Okay. Uh, half math, half reading and writing. Um, so 800 for each. And so the minimum is 980. We'll call it 1,000 out of 1600. So that's the minimum requirement for the NCAA. Okay. We always like to say that um, that's the minimum for the NCAA. However, the better you do academically in school for your GPA, mm -hmm. the better you do in the SAT or the ACT test, they will just give you more options when it comes time to being recruited by different schools and different institutions and coaches, right? Okay. 
they're, they're going to look at these student athletes based on their athletic skills. Then their very short list of questions, question one, two, or three is going to be, what are your academics like, GT, GPA, SAT? At the end of the day, can we get this student athlete admit, admitted into our school? Okay. Wow. Um, so the, the top three that they'll be looking at, of course, academics, because we are talking about student athletes. Um, and you did talk about the dedication in terms of, let's say, 18 hours spent, um, commitment to support and be able to prepare for that. There's a question in here mentioned about a one week course that I believe you may have offered during March break because we, like as you said, you know, you're a student, you're your own school, then your team you're playing for, and then you're also preparing for it. So we all have 24 hours in a day. It makes it kind of hard to split ourselves three, four, five different ways. It's possible, but at the end of the day, you still want to retain what's being taught or what you're doing. So, uh, is there any other sort of, uh, I guess, let's say, like a holiday uh, bunch or packages that you do to help those who may not be able to give you that full two or three weeks or six months, let's say, to be able to still condense it and get that support they need to be able to take the test? Yes. Yeah, so when we started our service, we started with two programs during the year. And because we were my, – my background is once I finished – playing i was heavily involved in coaching uh soccer in mississauga and dealing with these types of student athletes high performing student athletes that some would earn soccer scholarships some would choose to stay at home and play in ontario and lots of different reasons for that but so when we designed the program for these student athletes we specifically chose two times in the year the march break and the second last week of august to to address that problem right off the bat so we could deal with the kids during the day from 9 a.m. to 12. They don't have school um, commitments. They might still have commitments in the evening for training and games and competitions, but that's okay because we are dealing with them during the day, uh, March break in August. So that was really geared. That's what we did to address that issue. Um, at the end of the day, one of the – when you, these student athletes get on campus – one of the most important skills that they'll have aside from their athletics and their academics is time management. I like that. Right. All right. And there's just, there's just no way to beat around that. You're going to be focused on your academics. You're going to be focused on your athletics. Mm -hmm. Social life comes third or fourth or whatever it happens to be. Yep. Um, there's going to be times when academics is not the number one priority. You're off season. Mm -hmm. You just finished. The season. That's fine. Um, but yeah, so when we started our programs, they were very much with those time frames in mind. Um, March break in August. Eventually, there was you know enough feedback, enough positive feedback for our programs that we, and there was enough interest that we put together a uh, five week program on Saturday morning. So that's what we're going to have coming up okay. in November, which leads up to the December SAT test. Okay. So that's okay. five. So that's spread out about just over a month. Just over a month. So hopefully that answers your question there, um, Harv. Now, you mentioned about the Dece no, December test. Overall, how many times can – or how, is there a predetermined timeline as to when the SATs or all of these tests are done? in terms of preparing for it. Like, let's say it's done every year in March, every year in August, every year in December, like three, four times. So just to give an idea, so maybe somebody's not able to join the March break, they can prepare for August and knowing that for August, I'm preparing to do the test at this uh, particular time. Yeah, no, perfect, yeah. So those are determined well in advance. Okay. Um, so August, so I'm gonna answer this. So in Canada, mm -hmm. August, October, December, uh, March, and May. Okay. Okay. So five dates there. The August one is pretty new, just the past couple of years, and it's not necessarily even offered at every location. There may be some locations that do, you know, October, December, March, and May consistently, but may not necessarily do the offer the August test uh, sitting. Um, so those are the, the dates available in the GTA in Ontario in Canada. Okay. If it happens and it's okay, um, like let's say kids are, these student athletes are competing and showcasing and traveling on those weekends and they're not able to make it, 
Um, because we live close enough to the border, when the border is open, different discussion. Yeah. Um, there, there's test dates in June okay. and November where these kids could register, no problem, um, and go and choose a location uh, across the border. And there's many locations in Buffalo, and they can go and take the test on those two additional days. So really four to five dates in Canada consistently. Those are the international dates. Yeah. And then there's two extra dates, um, June and November, that are not offered, that are only offered in the U.S. Okay. So now we have a date set. So we have a timeline set as to how to prepare for it. Now, say I know nothing about what is going to be on the test. You already broke it down with, you know, math, reading, and writing. Um, you know, I'm still learning or trying to brush up on my English. Maybe my sentence stru structure doesn't really work well. But I'm, let's say I'm in grade 10 and I really am good in sports and I eventually want to, you know, get in, get a scholarship or go to U.S. or be an NCAA athlete. How do you go about helping me um, analyze what level I should be at or study in? Or is it overall um, test whether you're typically going to be versus A or C? Like, is there that pre-assessment that you check with that athlete and the family to help them determine the study plan? So that is something along those lines that we do. We offer them a practice test beforehand. Okay. So, um, yeah, we get a little bit of feedback that way and we can provide them with a score. But really, uh, our, our, our additional purpose to that is so that um, before the kids start the program, we want them to be able to walk in day one, whether it's in class, in person, or online. We want them to be able to start the program and we can go from like, we have 15 hours in this week, this program, we're gonna maximize 15 hours. Okay. We're not going to, you know, there's not gonna to be too much preamble because we've already, you've already sat down and wrote a practice test for real, mm -hmm. for three hours, time conditions, wow sent us the score and we've marked it for you. So it builds them, it builds up a familiarity for them okay. so that they've seen the content, that they've seen the format of the test. Again, multiple choice, almost entirely multiple choice. Uh, the reading passages, that's the first section, that's 65 minutes in length. That's really challenging. There's five, that, so that's what I would say is that um, in terms of being able to being able to assess where they're coming from. We give them a practice test, so we give them a starting point, but also our, it allows them to have like the familiarity of the format and the content and the timing. It's three hours in length, which is a lot of time. Yeah, Sounds like a lot of time, but guess what? You have to get through a lot of content, which is very challenging in those three hours, um, right? So that's pretty important too. In terms of another part of your question is when they want to build that timeline, build a plan, which is huge, right? That, that's a big deal, yeah. right? And that's kind of, and that's something we kind of just value added service that we provide to, to a lot of these families when we do these information sessions, right? Again, you saw us speak to Coach Mom, is that we recommend the student athletes take this the test at some point in grade 11. Okay. Why? Okay. Yeah, because by the end of, in order to be adequately prepared, for the, or to adequately prepare for the SAT test, they need to have completed grade nine and grade 10 math. Okay. Here in the, by our curriculum, right? Okay. If they haven't completed grade 10 academic math, they have not seen enough of the content on the math portion of the test to really do perform as well as they would like. Um, uh, some kids, if they luck out with their schedule in grade 11 in high school, they may see math again in first semester and if they take, and if they're able to prepare during that time frame and take the test sometime after first semester, that might be good for some student athletes be, who maybe need that extra support for math. Um, some kids, once they finish grade ten math, they're good to go. They get it, and they're 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 going to be fine. But some kids need that little bit extra time. That's really the differentiating factor uh, in terms of the English portion or the language, the reading and the writing. There's things that we'll, they'll see in school in terms of like essay writing and that sort of thing, but they're not, it's the writing that they're doing that they're not, they're no longer required to write the essay portion on the SAT test. Oh. That was optional and the SAT people have actually removed that. Okay. Um, yeah. If some, if some kids are being recruited by certain schools, like higher end academics uh, institutions, 
they'll have their own essay that the kids will need to complete as part of that admissions package, but it's not uh, required with the SAT test anymore. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and then there's another question as a follow-up um, with regards to, there are other options out there. And, you know, best ed, best education prep is, you know, one of many. And I, the reason why I reached out to you, because like you said, based on your presentation during uh, with Coach Mom, you stood out as, you know, easy to um, work with, very understanding. You have a mathematics background, so you know what you're talking about. When you say two plus two is four, you do know that you're not explaining two plus two is six or whatever the case may be. Um, so one of the questions coming in is, you can easily even download some off of internet. You can buy the book. You can pre-purchase it from a specific, you know, online company and go to the library and teach yourself. I think even the local library teaches that and all of that. Um, and those are great in some ways, but the question is, you know, how do you compare yourself to that or what makes you, you more stands out more so they can come and get that hands-on one-on-one support to be able to complete that test? Yeah, great, great question, totally fair question. And here's the, what I'll say is, these kids, these student athletes are living at a great time because there's no excuses, right? You can find, okay, so, <laughs> On Amazon on Amazon.ca, you can find this book. Yep. Okay. With eight practice tests for forty-five dollars, no problem. Mm -hmm. Order it, and you have eight practice tests. You're good to go. You can find those eight same practice tests for free on the College Board website. Spoiler alert. <laughs> okay. But if those resources are there, and you never use them, okay that's not really helping you, right? If you order that book yep. and it sits in your room or on your desk or under your bed for a month and a half until two weeks before the test, it's not really going to help you. Yeah. There's right. Okay. So there's some kids that need the structure of a program to help them along the way. Okay. There's some kids that don't, and they could, they walk into my math class when I was still teaching math and they could teach the lesson before I even started because they were that bright and that strong, okay, academically. Not all kids fall into that category, um, first thing. Second thing, what does make us a little bit different, and I agree with the, I always say, I always say this to myself. I said, anyone can really tutor math or tutor reading and writing or maybe test prep. Yeah. What makes us a little bit different, right, is not that I can teach math much better. I think I teach it well. But I've lived the life of a student athlete Okay, I've been on a scholarship. I, I know what the time constraints, the time management is like when you have to wake up at eight in the morning, go to class, go to the dorm, get to the locker room, change for training, get out to practice until 530, get back to the locker room, clean up, get back to the dorms, have dinner with your teammates or your friends or whatever, then go to study hall. So that doesn't necessarily help me teach math better, but it helps us in the sense that we're dealing with student athletes and it helps us um, provide that additional value added service to them. I've been a student athlete myself. I've had to write the SAT test myself, wrote it two times downtown Toronto. Um, my colleague, Paul, he's the father of a now graduated scholarship athlete. His son, uh, just graduated um, from a golf scholarship um, at a Division One school in South Carolina, right? And that's really five years ago, six years ago, how we started. We were colleagues on staff talking about his son going through this pro process, and him, as an English teacher at a high school, many years of, of education under his belt, they were looking for help for the son to, you know, prepare for the SAT test, and they looked into a couple of other services, mm -hmm. larger, smaller, one-on-one, -on -one, and they just couldn't come across anything that was really, really satisfied them. And so we put our heads together and we said, hey, you know what, I think given our experiences, student athlete, coach, parent, teachers with the expertise and the curriculum, uh, we can help student athletes. And so I think, yeah, it doesn't necessarily come out in terms of the teaching itself, but it comes out in the teaching because we understand who we're dealing with. Yeah and the student athletes, whether it's empathy, whether it's dealing with the parents and helping them along the way, whether it's helping the student athletes build a plan 
throughout high school, the checklist, the NCAA having a deep understanding of the GPA uh, and the timelines, the NCAA, NCAA eligibility and all that sort of stuff. Great. And is so I, hope more, I hope that's a fair answer. When you're doing it or do you do the studies as a group? Sorry, one more time. When, the, when you're preparing the, the student athletes, are most of the, um, the teachings that you're doing, is it more individualized or do you often do it as a group as well? Because, you know, different people, some people learn individually, some people like, you know, to be in, the, in a group setting. So maybe somebody asks a question, it helps them, you know, filter through so they can also put that into how it works for themselves. Yeah, you know, great question. It's both. Um, so predominantly, we do three, you know, programs a year, groups, if you will, classroom setting um, throughout the year. But we'll also get kids that cannot attend for whatever reason. They're traveling, they're busy, it doesn't work for them, no problem. So they'll come to us for some one-on-one, -on -one, or sometimes we'll get, you know, some very dedicated uh, organizations that we work with year after year. And again, this March break doesn't work for them because they're traveling. But three or four of those athletes will want to come to us and we'll try to coordinate a little bit of a small group type scenario for three or four or five athletes. So it's kind of really the, the three larger programs is our main part of the service. But we certainly do have done a, not a lot of one on one or small group settings along the way as well over the past five, six years. Oh, and you also mentioned your co-founder son in sports your backgrounds in soccer and we keep mentioning student athlete so is the sat specifically for a certain sports field or any sports as long as you are trying you know your goal is to get that scholarship or pass that test and continue um your academic career so is it generic for all type of sports or specific uh sports related gifty you're crushing it by the way <laughs> Great questions. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> so that's, that's one of our, um, that's one of the ways we start our information sessions when we're dealing with organizations. Yes, I was a soccer kid, but my journey as a student athlete is plug and play, right? Whether it's soccer, basketball, volleyball, golf, swimming, football, the academic requirements are all the same. Okay. Okay. The SAT is the same for every student athlete. Okay is the same for every non-student athlete, for just like a regular student. So that those parts don't change. Um, in terms of how many scholarships are available per team, per roster, for school, and that what level, yeah. those things change a little bit. But at the end of the day, the academic requirements, you know, they, they're, they're blind to what, what sport you play. Okay, okay. So the whole idea is trying to pat make sure that you get the minimum let's say 980 but you want to go a lot higher because based on the higher you are the more your rank of course um nobody a b is a great pass but it's good to get a b plus or let's say um, and it doesn't matter if you're going in for tennis basketball soccer um cricket i don't know what other sports are out there um you're looking at your name your student number how you did and it's the numbers that i guess count for you to move p to even be considered correct yeah to even be considered right there's what i will say is like you need to achieve those minimums but once you're at the minimums or slightly above the, the schools do have a little bit of wiggle room in terms of like your overall package and what you bring to the table not necessarily as a, just as a as an athlete but who you are as a person and what you bring to the table as well, right? And so each school athletic team needs to have a, a certain G, overall team GPA. Okay. And if a coach knows that, hey, I've just recruited a student athlete with a really high GPA, really high SAT score, well, the next recruit I have, if I'm looking at someone who's maybe a little bit lower than the team average, well, then that, but still meets the NCAA minimum, right? We're not breaking any rules. Um, there's a little bit of wiggle room there because within each team there's you know a team overall gpa um i always say to student athletes if you're being recruited by the school your admission package has the benefit of sitting in a separate pile right versus a regular student okay. right whereas your admissions package if if necessary the coach could you know 
imagine the scenario. I mean, it might be a phone call, but in the, in the old days, it might be this, a coach walking an admissions package down to the admissions office and say, hey, this is Sarah or this is Johnny from Toronto. We really like this kid as a student athlete. This is their admissions package. What can we do to help this kid out? Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a nice, it's nice to have that person on your side. Yeah. Whereas if you just a regular student, you won't, you wouldn't have that. Yeah. Right. So. Extra look. And um, Harv beat me to the next question, which I think was on our discussion, uh, discussion questions. Differentiating between SATs and ACTs. And what's the difference between them? Uh, pros and cons? Um, preferential depend on sports or depend on school, school level, city, state? Like, what's your take on that? What, what, if you had to, if you had to buy a, a basketball shoe, would you buy Nike or Adidas? <laughs> True. Right. True. Okay. No. No. And I'm being very, very honest and very. That's exact. That's all it is. Okay. They're two competing brands, two competing companies that both offer the same product, okay. a test, a standardized test for the universities for the NCA, which are both accepted by the NCA and all the universities. Okay. The SAT, three hours in length, almost exclusively multiple choice. There's some short answer on the math sections. Um, it's scored out of sixteen hundred. It's reading, writing, and math. Four sections, reading, writing, and two math. ACT, three hours in length, exclusively multiple choice. Four sections, reading, writing, math, and science. One section of science. To be fair, to be honest, the science is much less periodic table science, and it's much more... Uh, science literacy. Can you read this data, this graphic information, and ascertain or take out some information and answer some questions, scientific-based questions, based on the content of that test, of that, of the data that they presented to you? Okay. Um, and it's for whatever reason, it's scored completely different than the SAT. Um, each section is scored out of 36. Multiplied by four, it's 144. So the minimum ACT for the NCA is 75 out of 144. Wow. Okay. This is good to know because it does often get a little bit um, bumbled together. And it's like a sentence structure. Like I'm taking SAT and ACT is like, oh, okay, great. And not understanding the, like, again, the mathematical aspect of it and the detail breakdown um, behind it. And like you said, it's a preferential. Now, does it matter? Say, you know, my child wants to, through their college years or university years, once they're done, they get their four-year, you know, degree, they want to be able to come out out of, uh, in science, a degree in science or a degree in, in, in math or a degree in um, technology. So does that also play a factor for uh, for the parents deciding should they take the ACT or SAT or should they be taking both together? Because ultimately, you know, I'm, or we're always thinking ahead. Yes, you want to get in and they've been there, but what are you going to come out of it afterwards, right? Um, so the testing, does that also help determine what the end goal is? Um, yeah, so so the answer is, yeah, it will. It, that w- wouldn't matter which one. Um, as, if you're looking to, I mean, if you're really science-based or engineering-based, really th- probably the overriding factor would be the level, right? The admissions policies for the universities, how well you would need to do on the SAT and the ACT. So okay. if you choose one or the other, it doesn't really matter. If you choose option A, you're going to have to do this well okay. for this engineering program. If you choose option B, you're going to have to do this well on this test in order to be accepted or admitted into our engineering program or our pre-med program, whatever it happens to be, right? Okay. So the test wouldn't matter. It would just be the score you get on either test would be reflected on their admissions policy. No. Does that make sense? And do you recommend taking both or should just be one? Yeah, no, it's, it's not a problem. I, we usually, I mean, if kids have that question, if it's, if we say, Hey, you know what? Do you like science? yes or no, or are you really comfortable with science, then maybe you lean in that direction. If not, either one is, you know, then maybe just the SAT. What actually comes probably more into play for us, um, get, Gifty, I'm in Mississauga. I'm not, like, whereabouts are you? I, I, I have no idea. It's okay. I did, sorry? 
He told me, yeah. oh, bye. are you just up the road from me? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh my God, because I'm in like, I'm on the east side of Mississauga. Okay. Um, um, so what come, honestly comes more into play is that for whatever reason in our area, in Ontario overall, it's much easier, it's much more accessible to find an SAT test date and location mm -hmm. versus an ACT test date and location. Okay. So that just, I think for kids in our area, uh, that's probably more of a determining factor as opposed to which one they prefer. If they happen to look at them online and do a practice test and say, hey, I just have like, I'm just way more comfortable with the ACT, mm -hmm. go for it. It's just honestly significantly fewer uh, locations um, for the AC. You can still find them, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But the SAT is much more accessible and much offered much more readily throughout the year in the GTA and in Ontario, across Ontario okay. versus the ACT. Now, you mentioned both of us being two different cities, even though we're also part of Toronto. And with COVID going on, um, are the tests virtually? Or, I mean, have they moved towards virtually or you still have to physically go in person? So let's say you're in Kingston, Ontario, and you find the spot at Metro Convention Centre here in Toronto. And... For whatever reason, you don't want to drive on the 401 for that length of time, is that option to do it virtually to still get, you know, the test done or this, the part of the recommendation is to be done physically? Yeah, so at this time, they, are, they have not reached that level. Okay. Um, uh, I will say, right, a little plug, we ran our programs mostly in person. COVID hit. We quickly... Uh, you know, pivoted to like the online program. So we're offering our programs online. I think we will return to in class, but I think we'll also continue to offer online only because we found what was really neat was that there would be kids in the east end of Toronto, Durham, Scarborough, North York that may not want to drive across town for our program five days a week and not to be there at 9 a.m. Yeah. in Mississauga, Oakville. And so, and they might not have that program you know, in their backyard either. Mm -hmm. So the online format really helped us, you know, service some other student athletes who might not normally get to our program. So that was nice uh, for us. But yeah, in terms of the original question, that's the reason why the NCAA, so if there's anyone listening, right, and they're in grade 12 um, and they're looking to get a scholarship or heading to school next year, right, for those kids based on the SAT, based on COVID and the SAT, ACT test being canceled, um, in person for the past year and a half, those kids do not require an SAT or ACT test score. Okay. For next fall. For the kids, the, so the kids who are like in grade 12 right now, or maybe let's say fifth year. Okay. Right, and they're looking, or they're looking at going into school next fall. The kids who are in grade 11 right now, as of now, there hasn't been that sort of an announcement made. So as of now, grade 11, grade 10s, grade 9s, should expect that um, they will need a test score for 2023 or beyond. Okay. And um, that we talked a lot about the process. And again, it's a business. So you do are providing service and it is much needed. And Harrogate jumped the gun on one of the questions when it comes to money. Like, one of the reasons I was saying is, you know, let's say a kid or a family in Kinston or Whitby, I mean, driving back and forth every day or twice a week, you know, it adds up. It's not cheap to buy the book on Amazon. It's not cheap to everything regards, you know, comes to money. And again, the whole idea is you're also trying to get scholarship to offset anything and still support your, your career and your academics and athletics. So with the tests that are situated here within the GTA, if, you're able to, can you get, uh, give us a ballpark of what we're looking at when it comes to registering to go and actually do the test, like the fees associated with it. So those yes. watching or watching later that are sure thinking, oh, I'm just going to register and go and then boom, they realize, oh, it's 200 versus 2000. Like what's the range or what should we be uh, looking at and how can parents prepare for that financial side of it to support their child? So specifically to take the test? Yeah. Yeah, so to take the test for the SAT or the ACT, they're both, I think, I'd say it's a little bit, and because they're based out of the U.S., so you register through their website and you pay in U.S. funds, 
I think they're both a little, I would say 110 to 120 US okay. per SAT test, uh, per test sitting, right? So if a kid, and I think this is, you know, we didn't really get to this point, but uh, a lot of kids will take the test a second time, not just to see if they can improve their score. It's a bit of a strategy. So um, let's say you build a plan and you plan on taking the test twice. Uh, you're looking at like 120 bucks US multiplied by two, 250, yeah. 300 and change, right? For Canadian to take the test. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. with, okay, so doing it, you mentioned about doing it twice. Is that a good strategy? And let's say the second time I didn't do as well, does the first test mark is the one that get looked at? Or the second time I did so much better. That's the one I get looked at. How, how, was it a determined factor to yeah. the one? They're really, they're really just looking at the numbers. Okay. Whether it was your first, second, or third, it doesn't count against you. If your first one was really badly, they don't like take that and average it out with your third test attempt. They're just looking at the final score and whichever one is your goodest mark. That was a, that was a joke. Whichever one is your best mark. Right in. Um, <laughs> Whichever one is your best mark, that's the one they'll take. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It, and some kids take it a second or a third time because they're trying to improve, not because they just want to try to get to the minimum, mm -hmm. but some kids, right, in, in certain sports, right, like basketball is a special case when it comes to scholarships because a basketball scholarship is what they call um, a headcount sport, mm -hmm. right? Basketball at the NCAA is a headcount sport, so it's a full scholarship, whereas soccer is not a headcount sport, right? Mm -hmm. So soccer was is an equivalency sport. So this, there's 10 scholarships on a soccer team that are now split up amongst 25 student athletes, right? So some kids try to take the test a second or a third time because a better mark might help them secure some academic financial aid, mm -hmm. right? Some kids take it a second or third time because they're looking to improve their score of 1,400 to 1,500 because they want to go to Princeton. Right, or they want to go to Duke, or they want to go to Stanford, or whatever this happens to be. So, okay. yeah, there's lots of reasons, but it is a bit of a strategy. But yeah, accordingly, there is a price tag and a timeline, yeah. right? Um, but there is a price tag to that. So families and athletes, yeah, I do need to plan accordingly for sure. Okay. Um, and along the line with the finance aspect of it, from your service, um, do you have a certain package or starting price, or um, and if by all means, you know however comfortable you are in sharing it. And um, let's say I want to register my sons. What is your certain point in terms of saying, okay, this is six weeks plan. We're going to work with you or two weeks plan, whether it's one month, two months, this is what we started with. Or there's a fee associated, like there's different levels on it just so that parents can understand, especially for those that are just starting grade nine or grade 10, like you mentioned, grade nine and 10 math is important. So when they get to grade 11, we know what we're working with. Hey, I'm going to reach out to Joe's team. I know when I heard them talk, this is the average. We're budgeting for it because we really want you to be able to prepare and take this test. Um, by all means, if you're comfortable, if you can give us a ballpark with regards to the services you provide and the price um, associated. 100%. And of course, I'm, I'm going to say because we have a website and there's no secrets, right? Like we don't. Yeah, our fees are out there and I'm coming from, when we started this, I'm still coming from a point where I grew up with with a family that, yeah, immigrant parents, not highly educated. So, you know, soccer was an entry level sport. It wasn't one of the more expensive sports to participate in, right? So we are sensitive to all of that. People can look at our website they can do a. There's no. There's no secrets. You can do a Google search. No. No problem. We know what some of the other company, right? It's so. It's not a problem. So, our pro. We do the programs. Kids can come to us for individual tutoring packages, and there's a range of whether you want two, five, or ten. Teammates, small groups can come to us for a group of packages as a small group, and there's different ranges on the website. The most common. Uh, fees right where the most common programs that we run are the old, the larger programs and so the starting price the price for that full program 15 hours plus the practice test okay. plus a post test if they're interested right it's an option is 795 there is an early bird special for 745 but when we do these types of things baller mom 
gifty and we're connecting and we deal with coach mom and we're building relationships and partnerships with different sporting groups, whether it's basketball or soccer, or whatever it happens to be. And if there's somebody out there or you know somebody that's not here, but hey, go reach out to Joe. Yeah. The preferred rate we have for groups that we, we work with on an ongoing basis is six ninety five for the full program. Okay. Week 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 long program, fifteen hours plus the practice test. And we feel that it's a really competitive price uh, in terms of what else is out there. If absolutely, if there's situations um, and families that you know need some additional support, then you know, we're def yeah we're, we're definitely here to help as well. Good. Well, thank you for that. Um, I'll touch base later, and then we can share that information out. Um, again, everything is publicly available, so it's great that your honesty is there. That it's not there's no hidden fees, there's no small fonts, you know, dotted dotted where you have to like zoom in just to see what the you know exceptions are. Like like the like when you're going to when you find a parking lot downtown Toronto and it's <laughs> nine, but then there's like there's like a big nine, so the nine gets you, but then it's like yeah, yeah. whatever. It's, it's, and, and I, I appreciate that, that, you know, because there are certain businesses or certain people that have a certain point, you know, to sort of get people in. And then once you're in, there's a but, 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 and then all these exceptions comes in, which could throw off people. So, again, that, you know, speaking from your experience, definitely is something that parents appreciate because it allows us to prepare um, a budget <laughs> to make sure that we're on this journey together. And the ultimate goal is, of course, getting to get their kids to be able to pass this test so they can take the next step in pursuing their academics and athletic career. Um, with that also being said, though, I just wanted to hear from you again with regards to COVID. Again, it hit a lot of us, and you did mention, you know, so certain grades or certain people, certain families were not able to, to complete the test because of all the lockdowns that went through. Some got exemptions from it, um, and some may hinder them, even with the exemption, because of, you know, where their academics may be. Going forward, where doors open, everything is great, people are coming in in person, and you're doing, you know, you're still doing the education and everything. Where do you see yourself going? Um, in terms of your company itself growing or what we can expect from you so that we can say, okay, yeah, I remember hearing him talk about it. Now they're doing this. These are the offerings that I can support. You did mention a little bit earlier about, you know, tutoring for even the Canadian students. Um, so perhaps maybe that's something that you're going to expand more on because the journey to U.S. may not always work out for everybody, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah, so no, in terms of like what we're, where we're at, um, yeah, COVID has... 100% even hit us because the SAT test was not required. So kids are going to, kids are, don't want to go out of their way to take a test if they don't have to. Right. So obviously, you know, we, I, we still ran some programs, but they were much lighter. Um, there were, you know, and truthfully speaking, there were a lot of kids um, who were being recruited by schools and the school said, Hey, you know what? We understand that the SAT test is no longer required. However, mm -hmm. if you can't find a way to get the test, take the test and get a score, you know, whether it was based because their GPA coming out of school wasn't as strong and it needed some extra support, okay. or like I mentioned, not, you know, all scholarships are full scholarships. Mm -hmm. So some kids needed to, wanted to do a little bit better and to bump up their scholarship because they were going to get 60% athletic, but they wanted another 20% in academic money. So even though it wasn't 100% required, right, some kids were still looking to get it done during COVID. Okay. Um, in terms of where we're being, so even though COVID hit us and our programs were pretty light, um, what was neat was we continued to do our thing. Because in my heart of hearts, I think we're helping student athletes yep. and their families I had a good experience as a student athlete. I was able to continue playing soccer at the next level. Very good. Uh, you know, Penn State, great experience, all sorts of good stuff, but also earn an education, which can be a game changer for some athletes and for some, some of the kids in those, those families. Yeah. Um, so even though our programs were a little bit lighter, we started, we still did our thing. We connected, we kept connecting and working with groups like this, like yourself, um, with coach mom, you know, with, certain soccer groups that we've developed partnerships with over the years, whether it's baseball, hockey, 
And so what's neat, what's pretty exciting about us is that, yeah, we've connected with a couple of good groups um, that, you know, run different events in the GTA, Ottawa. Now a soccer group is expanding to Calgary and Montreal, right, to run different showcase events. Wow. And what they're doing is, yeah, and what they're doing is in those locations, there's, yes, there's, I'm sure there's academic tutors, but there's not necessarily people dedicated to student athletes okay. to work with the test prep. And so they're going out to Ottawa and to Calgary to run a different event. And they're kind of beaming us in and doing a panel discussion to start off their, you know, showcase event. And so what I think will happen is I think on the SAT or the test prep side, they're, they're, it'll be, it'll be interesting. It'll be neat. I think we'll have like some growth, which is kind of exciting. Um, but at the end of the day, what we're really doing is most exciting and that's helping student athletes and helping their families kind of get through this process yep. and, uh, you know, have that, you know, potentially have that experience of post-secondary athletics. And now if it's the NCAA and that's what they want. Amazing. We want them to get there. We want to help them get there. Some kids may end up in Canada and that's not a bad option either, right? There's definitely not a bad option. Uh, and some kids maybe find a different pathway, like, you know, whether it's, I mean, we didn't even touch on like a junior college process where, the SAT or ACT isn't necessarily required, right? But some of those kids may want the Division One or Division Two experience, and so they are going to try to take the test, and maybe that's not their pathway, mm -hmm. and so they find a different way to get there. And so, yeah, I think that's where we're, we're hoping to get to in the next year or two when, you know, we return to normalcy for sure. Oh, my God. I think your growth is great because the fact that you have, you know, different, I guess, chapters, let's say, of working across all of Ontario, even Canada, um, to give that support and let everyone know, hey, there's this option here, there's a support here, and your presentation is on point because you are precise. Of course, you're a teacher, so you know how to <laughs> put point together um, and get that information out there. So for anyone else that, you know, um, that may have felt like you missed out doing the test or not sure how to start and go about it, definitely reach out to Joe's team because they will provide you a little bit of information on how you can work with them to prepare for your test. And you didn't mention on, you know, junior college, which is JUCO or a college version here for us. So there is a path, a different ways for different people to still be an athlete and still be get your academics going. And based on what you say, you provide those services. So you're not particularly focus on just one sports, one area, one city, one town, because, you know, academics and education is infinite. You can take it anywhere with you as long as you're determined and dedicated, as you said a lot earlier ago. Yeah. yeah. The math, the math doesn't change very much from province to province. Good. And the, and I can guarantee you the SAT test doesn't change from the U S to Canada, from soccer to basketball to hockey. So it's the same. Um, and it's the same hurdle that all these athletes uh, need to overcome and uh, and pass through in order to get to where they want to get to. Okay. Now, let's say there's an athlete or a parent now whose child missed that free, you know, non-requirement stage, but they're still, you know, maybe they're repeating their fifth year in high school and they're still adamant to try to get a scholarship or get into a school in the States. Is if I forward, let's say they forward, they contact you, is that something you can also help them process and start preparing for that test? Because you didn't mention, you know, there's a timeline for dates to do the test and everything like that. We're what, like second week now in school. Um, in terms of crunch time or understanding it, how soon or how late would that be for that particular family to reach out to you and get that preparation going? Yeah, so I would... I always like to work backwards. So if we're talking about a fifth year kid and they or a grade 12 kid, and even though those kids don't necessarily need the SAT test to be recruited for next year, but maybe the coaches have asked them to do it. Maybe they want it to uh, strengthen their admission package. So let's put them on a really short timeline and say, e you need to get the test written by November or December. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. November in the U S December here in can available here in Canada. Um, we're running right and that when we does when we schedule our programs they're scheduled with specific sat dates in mind okay we're running a program at the end of october through november on saturday mornings and that's geared for student athletes to write the sat test in december so we have kids registered for that program already some of those kids have found locations in ontario 
I think one or two kids have just dedicated themselves to finding a location across the border in Buffalo. Um, if they're looking at the November uh, SAT test, our program wouldn't necessarily work because we're kind of like just in the middle of our program. So then they, they would need to contact us directly and we would schedule some, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one tutoring um, or, you know, if they have a teammate, a classmate, and whether it's saying it could help offset the costs, then it could be like a little bit of a small groups situation as well right. leading up to November, right? But time, yeah, time is a little bit of the essence, right? Because now they're looking at the November's test date. That's a month. Mm -hmm. We're like, as you mentioned, December, September 22nd. By the time we get organized, we're at the beginning of October, right? So it's about a month. Yeah. So I wouldn't want to wait much longer. Let's put it that way. Okay. So for anyone that may feel like, you know, your time is up or you're in a crunch, um, the sooner the better that you reach out to Joe's team. Um, the, I guess the more time you provide for them, the better it is that they can map out how best to support you as to when the next test is in taking it in person, which is great. And then all the tests are often done within Toronto, correct? For the... Yeah, the SAT test, there's lots of, lots of offerings in the GTA, uh, East and West, yeah, plenty of. The only thing now for October test dates, because we're still just coming out of COVID, there's fewer locations. Um, but uh, the, we've, I, we've, we've helped some families already do some planning and uh, there's many more kind of returning to normal, but there's many more locations available for December and even more so available moving forward to March of 2022. Nice, nice, wow. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, I love it, bringing it to the end. Oh my God, so much information. Hopefully I did ask all the specific questions. Um, I'm gonna leave it up to you now to share anything else that you want us to know and how best we can uh, reach out to you and get the services that you provide. Yeah, no, I think the only thing I would say is, you know what, it's, it's an exciting experience. Um, you know, like I, I was, I, not to pump it up or anything, but I went to Penn State and it was like, it's a big school and I had a very good experience on the field and off the field. Memories created for a lifetime. I still go back down like every fall, uh, you know, to either connect with the soccer team or watch the team play and former teammates will meet down there and that sort of thing. And, and it also allowed me, you know, a soccer kid growing up in Ontario who may or may not have had challenges getting into university in Ontario in the front door without, without my soccer skills, it helped me earn an education, right? And so if there's anyone that has that opportunity, it, it's an amazing experience. It doesn't come without its sacrifices um, today. Uh, and that's like sacrifices individually and the, the family also plays a role in that, right? Because when I was 14, 15 and 16 without a driver's license, people had to get me places to train and get me places and pay the registration costs, right? So there are sacrifices, but it was an excellent experience. And so if um, anyone has that opportunity, you know, definitely try to pursue it, right? And uh, I, that's all I can say is I, I think it's, you know, a really positive experience in terms of our programs, our website, uh, you can contact us through Instagram, no problem. If, if, you, if you have an email distribution list and you're contacting people, and you can put in our email address, they can go there, or my personal email is fine. Um, and yeah, they can contact us anytime and we'll answer questions and help them get sorted out and build a plan. That's 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 a really important part. Yeah. You need to build a plan. Yeah, build a plan and uh, they'll help you execute it out. So again, thank you so much. For those that join a little bit later, um, this is Joel Karathi from Best Education Prep. Um, they provide assistance and support to student athletes in taking their SATs or ACT tests to uh, NCAA um, admission schools in U.S. and JUCO and various levels of um, schools in U.S. and even Ontario here. Um, they provide um, tutoring aspect as well, too. So their focus is more on academic side of being a student athlete or being a ball mom uh, family or um, a sports family. Um, I will provide all of his contacts when I post this a little bit later and you can reach out to him um, if you have any questions. Then getting your child or getting your athlete signed up to get all the services that they provide. Again, thank you so much, Joe. I'm so glad we were able to work it out and get all this uh, digital uh, Instagram thing working. Um, I appreciate it. And uh, if 
all last words to you. No, I, it was a pleasure. I thank you for reaching out to me. I know you saw our presentation with coach mom. So I really appreciate the opportunity and because of what you're doing and helping these families that are going through this process next year, there's going to be another group of families that need this information two years down the road. So if, yeah, if you're open to it, we are definitely open to you and kind of like making this a, a yearly thing on the calendar and we're helping kids and families together and we really appreciate for it. For sure. For sure. All right. Thank you everybody. Have a good rest of your night. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye. Bye-bye.